Hey everybody, let's talk about Tana. It's a film set and shot entirely on the remote island of Tana, which is part of the Republic of Vanuatu, an island nation located in the South Pacific Ocean, right next to Australia. The people of this remote community live in lush rainforests, right next to a constantly active volcano, and they have completely rejected all forms of colonial and Christian influences in favor of their very traditional and pure custom, which is a system of beliefs and laws that hasn't really changed in over centuries, and one of the things that's at the heart of this system is arranged marriage. The film is ultimately a love story about Wava and Dane, who belong to a tribe that wants to exchange brides with another tribe, the Imedin, a much more aggressive tribe that has been killing the other tribe's people for a long time now, and this is a sort of plan of theirs to try to settle their differences and stop the bloodshed. And of course Wava is the potential bride, but she is in love with Dane, and the two of them will decide to disobey their parents' wishes, basically, and try to run off together. It has been said that Tana is basically Romeo and Juliet, but with Aberdeen. Originals. And I think that's a totally valid comparison. I mean, the story pretty much hits most of the beats of Romeo and Juliet, but don't think for a second that because of that, this is just another one of those ordinary, been there, done that sort of love stories. No, it's not. This film is pretty amazing, and it's probably as close as you can get to like almost perfectly mixing like reality, like genuine people, genuine a genuine story, real emotions with fiction filmmaking. You see, the film was prepared and shot entirely in seven months in the actual village of Yakel, with the full collaboration of the local people who keep in mind have never seen a film or a camera before the filmmakers have arrived and the cast is completely comprised of, of people from this place who are keep in mind are not actors and it's just so incredible how uh, how they can be as natural and as passionate and as authentic as, as you would hope them to be. I think the film really deserves all the praise it is getting for the incredible job they did especially considering how risky this endeavor was they took on like hiring non-actors but you know it has been known to work out incredibly well in the past like even some of the best films ever made, like City of God, for example, uses completely non-professional and inexperienced actors. So you know, sometimes it can really work like a charm. There is one gripe I have with this aspect, however, and that is, unsurprisingly, the actors don't really have a lot of range. And I wouldn't consider this to be a problem in general, especially when concerning more of the side characters. Uh, most of them, all of them actually, are incredibly endearing. Like Wawa's little sister, for example, who is just, just adorable. She's just the cutest thing I, I ever saw. Her grandmother, who is just incredibly hilarious. She is the life of the party, the wisecracking old lady, a constant source of jokes. Her father and mother, who determinedly but calmly try to explain to their daughter that uh, giving her away as a bride to another tribe is the most beneficial thing for everyone. This is how they try to talk their daughter out of being self, what their eyes they see as selfishness. Uh, and the traditionalist and very hard-headed elders, all of these characters suit their purpose in the story more than adequately. But I just would have wanted just a little bit more from my two leads who, who are great and they really have very good chemistry they're, they're basically playing themselves they are probably a, a couple in real life as well but I just wish like their performances packed a little bit more of a punch you know what I mean uh, because like I said you can really sense that their range is, is, a, is a lot more limited than that of a professional actor but at the same time I completely realized that having professional actors in this film would have completely destroyed its authenticity and on the other hand the cinematography and the soundtrack more than make up for some of the performances shortcomings like some of the more emotionally charged the moments are built up by by music and by the visuals and man it's incredibly it's it's breathtaking the, the scenery here is so so grand that volcano is one of the most epic things I have ever seen in my entire life the film also has many light-hearted and funny moments one of my favorites is when after Dane and Wava run away they come across a group of Christians who want to give them refuge but they decide like ah no we're just gonna we're just gonna go and find their own path and after they leave they're talking to each other and Dane is saying man these these people are really freaking me out <laughs> and I thought that was really funny I resonated with it now I'm an atheist myself but I have Christian friends and we get along just fine so it's not like I'm some big anti-Christian asshole or anything like that but there's just something about aboriginals and Christianity that just doesn't just doesn't match just doesn't click for me you know I mean leave Christianity to, to for Europe and for the Americas and for South South Africa but just leave Oceania out of it please I mean they have their own culture and it's really cool let's not ruin it for them, okay? So I definitely recommend Tana. I think I actually forgot to mention in the beginning that this actually happened. This is a true story. It happened in 1987, I think they say in the film. Yeah, definitely recommend it, and I want to ask you guys, what is your favorite film that, that features non-professional or non-actors in its cast? If you have any, please let me know down in the comment section. And if you like this review, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, so I can see you later with other reviews. Until then, folks, stay cool, stay awesome, goodbye.